few minutes ago. So anyway, but hope other people will come. This is so good to have you for the School of Ministry. And see, I'm stalling because we've got more people coming in. And uh, so we'll wait just a second for them to get in. Let's open with prayer. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have today to get together. We thank you for bringing Sabella today with the message that you have for us. We know that you're going to anoint her mightily. We just pray, Father, for the fruits and gifts of the Spirit to be in operation amongst us today. And we pray for our nation. We know we're going through a wild time right now, but we all know it turns out good. As wild as it seems, it's going to be wild. Don't you love it when God, God's going to move like the Red Sea? Just something's going to happen. It's going to be, it's all going to be good. So I, I appreciate that, Lord. We appreciate it. We trust you in all things. And so we praise you and give you glory. Now, <clears throat> before we start today, I want to let you know that next week on Saturday, don't come here. Because if you do, nobody will be here except you. <laughs> okay, just so you know. And we, we'll, we'll try to get it to everybody, but sometimes we don't have an email address or something. So I'm glad Ruby's here. And some people, we, we just want to make sure that you don't come next week all the way over here and find out we're not here and then get mad at me. I don't want you to be mad at me. I didn't do anything. It's not my fault. So, But before, because of Christmas or something, I guess they decided to take it off, right? Um, and... Uh, we are going to start out into uh, January with some great stuff. It's going to be really good this year. Amen. I'm looking really forward to it as we are continually gathering new folks. I was really happy up north. We picked up some new folks. You know, one of the things we're starting to tap into, I think, is the millennials. And millennials are the ones that I really after because they're not screwed up yet. So if you can get them before they screw their life up, it's normally pretty good, you know. And uh, so let's keep keep it all in prayer because I believe we're in a, we're going to be in a great harvest time. And uh, uh, amen. So I don't want to take too much time because I know Sabella's going to come up here and she's probably going to prophesy for an hour and a half and <laughs> cast out devils. And, but I do have a word. Now this this came to me last night. <clears throat> I did not sleep last night, hardly at all. And uh, so I'm going to say something. When you, when you have these kind of words, please don't. If it's not for you, it'll, it's very specific. If it's not for you, don't try to make it for you or anything. And don't be suspicious. I wonder who that's for or whatever. Because it could be for somebody here or it could be for somebody out there. All right? I might even know who it's for, but I wouldn't tell you. It's not important. They're the ones that need to heed this. And it's interesting because it's for single ladies. Maybe more than one. You're getting involved with a, a fella. And uh, he's pressing you to compromise your values that's the way i'm going to put it and the lord wants you to know that that's not good you don't want to go that direction in fact there's a song that came to me when i was thinking about this called who do you love is it him or is it me and you know with with the lord you don't want to put men before the lord that's a very very you know and so if they're not totally it's not the one or it's, to, it's totally not right you need to take heed of that this is a warning okay for somebody i don't know like i said it might might be somebody here might be some might be four people ten because people watch these things but you know i know how it is sometimes even though we're believers we can be tempted if we meet somebody because they're not right where we're at to to start compromising a little bit. Don't do that. Keep yourself, because God wants to use you. And uh, he wants to use you mightily, and so you don't want to hinder that, right? By doing things that could hinder that. All right? And take it from somebody who's been around a long time. That's not where you want to go. Amen? Can you accept that all right? Okay. All right, Sabella, you ready? 
Uh, you're going to do the offering at the end. You, huh? Later, yeah. Yeah, there might be more people. Got to wait till everybody gets in here. That's the first rule of preaching. <laughs> Except when I preach, I tell people, you know, normally we receive the offering at the first because everybody's laid out on the floor. But, and it's hard to take an offering when they're all on the ground quivering. Okay, here we go. go oh, that's funny. Amen. Good word. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Well, hallelujah, full house today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you all for coming here. And I think, uh, Pastor Tom, you already welcomed our Supernatural Training Institute people online. And we are going to continue. Pastor Tom started the leadership teaching a couple weeks ago, and we're going to continue in that. And wow, if there's anything of many things that we should have learned this year, it's about the importance of leadership, right? Come on, somebody. Uh, mayors, not just who pr the president is, but who, who is leading in the nurse, nursing, doctors, pharmaceutical areas, school systems, everywhere. Leadership is crucial. Who we have leading is huge. And we have learned that, and may we learn that, body of Christ. Hallelujah. Okay. So we'll do the offering at the end. <laughs> I'm, glad you, I'm glad you said that because I have it at the beginning. All right, so we're going to continue this. Give me a little bit of grace because I uh, thought that I, I forgot about having a pocket in order to put the lapel up here. So I'm going to try to do this one-handed here with the mic. All right, so I am going to be teaching out of First Timothy chapter 3 starting with verse 1 i'm going to put this down for a minute all right and i'm going to give a little bit of a backdrop on this which many of you know but basically the situation with this is timothy is a young pastor in ephesus and uh, he is having kind of a leadership crisis situation. Paul in Acts 20 had given a warning about how when he left his leadership position that there were going to be people that would come in, and he actually called them grievous wolves, and that they were even going to rise up from within the flock, which is pretty intense, um, because part of the job of the leader is to be aware of that, amen? Amen. So this is basically kind of the, the general backdrop of that. And so uh, Timothy is asking Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul is giving him tips, telling him basically you need to deal with these things. You need to rebuke, correct. And if so, you may eat, if they don't repent, you may need to actually remove them and replace them with leaders. So Timothy, this is what you're going to look for for leaders. And how many of you know in the Bible that order matters when we're looking at scripture? All right, so the first thing, what we're going to look at today, and I'm going to unpack it uh, for us a little bit in the Greek, which is what I, I like to really do, is we're going to look at the number one thing before the list of things that Apostle Paul told Timothy to look for, for leaders, the number one thing, okay? So 1 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1. Apostle Paul talking. This is a true saying. True saying just means it's trustworthy. If, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. I want you to notice that word if. Very interesting. If, if now, the word man, okay, Pastor Tom, you told me to cast out some devils. We're going to deal with some religious devils for a second. Not probably in here, but online. Okay, the word man here in the King James Version is not an accurate translation. It's actually in the Greek. It's the word tis, T-I-S. It's gender, gender neutral. You heard me. It's a person, men and women, looking at the camera. Hey, it's okay, bye-bye. Men and women, okay? So that opens up the door to women in leadership positions as well. Hallelujah. Check out Pastor Tom's teaching on women in ministry. Moving right along. Okay. 
So this is a true saying. If a person, male or female, desire the office of a bishop. All right, so now let's just break this down again a little bit in the Greek bishop. Bishop kind of sounds religious. To us, interestingly enough, it's a, it was a secular term in the first century that Apostle Paul was using for this. So a bishop really is an overseer. It's translated in some translations as overseeing. It's basically a manager position, a supervisor position, a leadership position. Again, this could be um, mayors, governors, like I was mentioning at the beginning, people in those kind of obvious leadership positions. Okay, this could also be your homeschooling your children. It could be in your home. It could, it's basically a, a leader over a group of people or over a project, and you are responsible for it. So it carries a responsibility. This is not a light thing. It's not a casual thing. You are responsible in this position, amen? All right, so now I'm going to keep reading this as we unpack this just to help get it into our spirit. All right, so now having that information, I love going into the Greek because sometimes in the English translation, we lose a bit of the meatiness or the beauty of the full meaning because, you know, it's just one, one or two words sometimes. So we, now we have more of an idea for bishop. All right, let's read it again. If a person, male or female, desires the office of a bishop or a leadership position, okay, in the church, you can apply this outside of the church as well, but in the context of this, in the church, he or she desires a good work. Now let's look at desire, all right, in the Greek. Very, very interesting. I want you to notice that desire is actually mentioned twice. Often when something is mentioned more than once in the Bible, it's because it has extra, an extra oomph to it. You know, Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto you, you know, listen. So I think it's interesting here that desire is twice. It's not technically the same word, but it's the same root word. So desire, this is what it means in the Greek to stretch forward or to reach towards something with a burning desire to take hold of it. Let me say that again, okay? This is a person who you are stretching forward or to reach towards something with a burning desire, burning desire to take hold of it. This is the kind of desire that Apostle Paul is talking about that the person is to have become a leader that kind of burning desire, all right? What's interesting is then again, we, we see the desire again. So this is a true saying. If a person, male or female, desire, they, are, they have a burning desire, they're stretching out, they're reaching for, they, they, they have this desire for this leadership position, okay? Then he or she desireth, gotta love the King James, desireth, T-H, a good work. Now, interestingly enough, this is a compound of desire. It gets stronger. So what does this mean in the Greek? Someone who is passionately and relentlessly in pursuit and will stop at nothing, nothing to attain it. It portrays a growing emotion or a yearning it is all consuming. Wow. Wow. Let me, let me say that again, because I know that that's a lot. But this is the desire that Apostle Paul is saying. The number one thing before you even go into the rest of the characteristics, Timothy, you need to look at and make sure if, if, okay, so if, if, so if not, don't even, don't even look at them. If they don't have the desire, what kind of desire? a passionate and relentlessly in pursuit kind of desire that will stop at nothing to attain it. And it portrays a growing emotional or yearning. It is an all-consuming desire. This is the desire that you need to be a leader in the house of the Lord. Wow. Wow. All right. So, 
I want to just mention here too, just to complete on the Greek here, because I just think it's, I don't know, I, lo I love going into the more the meat of the word here. So a good work, so in God's eyes, this word in the Greek, because good, you know, good, ah, that's good. Well, what does it actually really mean? It actually means it's beautiful, it's excellent, it's honorable, it's noble, it's virtuous. That's the kind of desire it is. God says, wow, if you have that kind of desire, if I have placed that desire in you, that is noble. That is, that is a pure desire. It is okay for you to have that kind of desire for that, to serve the Lord in the house of the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. It's virtuous. That's noble. That's the kind of desire that he wants us to have for him. And, and Pastor Tom was talking about last week and the week before about that servant heart and that faithfulness. And as we unpack this further, we're going to see how that goes hand in hand. Because if you don't have the desire, come on now, if you don't have the desire to serve, if you don't have the desire to be persistent, if you don't have that desire, you don't have the desire. You're not going to do it. You're going to crumble the moment anything gets difficult. Because you won't have it. You won't have the desire. So we're starting to see why, before you even start going into the other characteristics, the number one thing needed is desire in the first place. All right? So let's look at this. One of the things that's helpful um, when, we're, when we're focusing and studying on a topic. So in this, let's look at what the opposite of desire would be. Desire less. Now, most of us would probably not even use the term desire less, but so I looked up some synonyms, some synonyms for what desireless is, okay? Because I want, I want you all to pause because we're talking to leaders in here and online. So we, we've all been here, right, where we have, <laughs> God bless them, right? We've worked with or ministered to or tried to encourage and teach desire less people. All right, here's some synonyms for desire less. Unambitious, uneager, unenthusiastic, passionless. And you know what came to me when I was studying this? What would Jesus call this? Lukewarm. And what does he say about lukewarmness? He's going to spit you or vomit you out of his mouth. Wow. Wow. So what's interesting about this, when we look at the desire, is it actually made me think, think of the Lord. This is the Lord's desire for us. Th this is, think about this now in the context of Jesus and the Father, and someone who passionately and relentlessly is in pursuit of us, in pursuit of the world, hallelujah, will stop at nothing to attain this, he is yearning, he's all consumed with this desire for us to the point where he laid down his life on the cross for us. That is an all-consuming desire to obey the Father in love and to do everything he could for us. That's our Lord. There, there is nothing in Jesus that is, you know, mamby-pamby, desireless, lukewarm, unambit, nothing in our Lord like that. Well, no wonder he doesn't like it. No wonder Apostle Paul is saying, listen, okay, and if, if there's going to be a person that's going to know besides Jesus, it's going to be Apostle Paul. Have you read his testimony, anyone? What he's gone through? You need to have desire. Come on, because when stuff starts to happen to you, when the devil, John 10:10, 10, 10, when he comes, not if he comes, when he comes to attack you, you will fold like a deck of cards if you have no desire. You will not last. You'll walk into a church, someone will look at you funny and you get offended and you need to leave because you got no desire. You don't have a desire. You're not, your desire is not on the right thing. Oh, well, I don't like what I'm hearing. Well, I liked, I liked the pastor last week, but now they're getting up in my business. Well, I, I, well, right? Come on now. Let's just be real. That, that, that's what's going to happen when stuff starts to attack you. When the, de when the de pastor's Linda's laughing over here. When, when, when the devil starts to attack you, whether it's your mind, your body, your finances, whatever it may be, if you don't have the desire to push through that, right? 
If you don't have an all-consuming desire, nothing is going to stop me from this. I don't care what comes my way. If you do not have that desire, you, you will crumble. You will. You, you will not go forward. The, the devil will just real quick just snuff that out. He'll snuff it out w without any problem at all. All right? So this is something, again, that I want to encourage us as, as um, we're unpacking this today, as we're talking about this, I'm going to share some testimony on this as well. I want all of you and all of you online to be thinking about Holy Spirit that you would show us in Jesus' name to evaluate yourself, okay? Because we have leaders in this room. We have leaders online. So evaluate that desire. Is there, do you have that desire in you, the desire we're talking about? Because if you want to be a leader, this is the first thing according to Apostle Paul, that you need to have for the reasons that we're talking about. Amen. And at the end, I'm going to pray because I believe that there's an anointing today, um, especially for uh, an impartation or a fresh fire and desire for you guys today. Okay. Um, so I want to just have you be expecting for that today. All right. Hallelujah. Now, I want to just look at, oh, okay. Thank God for notes. <laughs> Holy Spirit and notes. Hallelujah, right? <laughs> okay, so going back to the desire list for a second. All right, so you're not going to, let's be honest, okay? You're not going to advance much in life if you don't have the desire or the ambition to do so, right? Um, you can apply this to even the secular world. You're not going to get a job. You're not going to stay in a job if, if you don't have the desire, if you're unwilling, if you're, if you're not ambitious, if you're not going to do what your boss wants you to do. You know, in sales, for example, there's usually a quota that you need to do. Telemarketing, if you don't meet that, they, they'll kick you out. I did a telemarketing job when I was younger. I was really desperate because I'm totally not a salesperson. I don't like that because, you know, I try to be respectful of people's boundaries, and, which just like totally not for telemarketing. You know, you're like, you know, you're like, yes, hi, how are you? Buy the, you know, you're just, there's no respect. It's like you cross all the lines. So I really struggled with this because I'm like, oh, oh, well, hi, how are you today? You know, and the guy's breathing behind me and I, I, I hang up the phone. Did you make a sale? Uh, no. Well, I, I got the name of her cat. You know, you're not supposed to make friends. You're supposed to make money, right? And so, you know, that was the one job that I'm not afraid to say, well, the one job for the record that I got fired from or let go. And we, we, we both decided after three hours of me trying to call and make people buy the whatever it was, you know, uh, that that was not for me. And I happily said, that's right. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. If, so going back to this. If you don't have the desire, if you don't have that desire to do whatever it is you're called to do, you're not going to do it. That's the bottom line. You just won't. However, on the other side of that, you can lack experience, you can lack education, but if you have this desire to obey the Lord, you have this desire, God, I want Everything that you want for me, I don't care what it takes. I will do whatever you ask me to do. Okay, that's what this is. Passionate, relentless, whatever it takes to attain it, I will cooperate with you, Holy Spirit of God, no matter what. I don't care what comes at me. I don't care what's said about me. I don't care if I look like a fool for Jesus. Hallelujah. I will do whatever it takes. That's that desire. If you have that, people can teach you. You get trained. We all need training. This is what this is. This is a training institute. This is a Bible training. Hallelujah. This is what we need. We need training. We continually need training, right? We're all getting trained. All right? That doesn't end. So that's the hope. If you have this desire in you, I want to encourage people in here, out there. You may not be the most, quote, gifted person. Well, you know what? God can give that to you, and you may have something in you, you don't even realize it, but you have the desire to pursue and to study and to pray and to grow in intimacy with the Lord. You have the desire to come, okay, I want to submit myself to the Lord and to authority, to learn, to get trained. You have that. God can bring forth his will in your life because you're willing. What's another word for desire or a close relation? Willingness. You're willing. You have the desire. You're willing. Okay, Lord, I desire your will, so I'm willing to do 
what is needed no matter what. Right? So now we're starting to see why Apostle Paul said, first off, if they have this desire. If they don't even have this desire, you know what? Don't waste your time. Have any of you been there where you've been ministering, even to family, right? Oh, you gotta love our family when, you know, we're all praying for salvation of family members and they just think we're crazy. And my parents just thought I was nuts. I mean, I grew up in this conservative in New England. I mean, everything's about education. Everyone thing, right? Everything's liberal and all this craziness. And I have this encounter with the Lord and I am transformed. I mean, I got set on fire for God. Suddenly all I'm talking about is Jesus. I got my Bible and I'm like, do you know, mom, do you know, do you know that by the stripes of Jesus, you know, and I'm getting, <laughs> and my friend, they just think I'm crazy. But I had this desire when I had that. All right, so let me just share a little bit, give you some examples um, of how this desire by the grace of God can get you through so much, all right? And when I say that, to be clear, we know it's the grace of God, okay? So I'm not trying to say it's just the desire without God. It's this desire God has placed in us and that we are to steward and pray. One of the biggest blessings in my life many years ago at the previous church that I was at is we had a pastor there who was really in charge of the prayer. And we had a lot of, we prayed every day. We had home groups. We had a lot of training, which was extremely helpful because that's how you step out. You have to face these things. Again, desire. No matter how uncomfortable you are, the desire, if that desire in you, Apostle Paul is talking about, you will get up when you're uncomfortable. You will make mistakes. You will do that. Why? Because of the desire to, to be obedient. So this pastor, I remember clear as day, and I'm so grateful for this. One of the things he taught us is to pray for this. He said, and every day we did this, and I, to this day, I don't know how many years it's been, to this day, over, way over a decade, I've been praying this to this day. Lord, give me a passionate love and fire for you and your word. What is that? And desire, desire for you and your word, no matter what, and that you would protect my heart toward you, that I would not blame you for anything, no matter what happens, no matter what. And when I had this encounter with the Holy Spirit, this was, some of you know some of my testimony, uh, and some of you may not, but I was in a place where the devil was trying to absolutely take me out for the gazillionth time or whatever, and I was like the woman with the issue of blood in the Bible. That is who one of the characters that I related to at that time. I was extremely sick. I went to all the doctors and specialists in the city and the area. I spent all that I had, and I got worse. And I was eventually told after seeing all the Boston specialists, there's nothing we can do for you. You're, you're sicker than a full-blown AIDS patient. We don't know what the heck is wrong with you. Go home and basically die. I, that's what I was told. Everything surrounding me, everyone around me, all the doctors were speaking death over me. My parents, you know, oh, oh well. No, I, I lost everything, everything, everything. When I heard about Jesus. Come on. When I heard about Jesus, one day I put the TV on and I, I put on Daystar, Miracle One, I didn't turn it. Normally I would turn it and go, who are these, who are these weird people? I listened to it because it was the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And someone had bound the devil off me. Hallelujah for people that pray. Keep praying for your loved ones and don't give up. Someone had bound the devil off me. They had been praying for my salvation. They had a word of knowledge, bind the devil. And they did that within a week. I, was, I, I had this encounter, okay? So I turned on the TV, Marcus Lamb from Daystar, looking right into the camera. It was like he was talking to me. And you know what? He was. The Holy Spirit through him was, and to many. He looked right at me, and he began to tell me the full gospel. I had never heard the full gospel. Do you know that I was asking about Jesus since I was four years old? I was asking questions. No one ever shared the gospel with me, ever. I was practically, gosh, I don't even know. I was so, I don't even remember the age, late 20s. And I heard the gospel. And he said, do you know 
that by Jesus' stripes you were healed? Do you know Jesus loves you so much and he took the sickness for you? Now, mind you, I had just been given a death sentence. And I'm listening to this and I'm like, what? I had no idea. What? And tears start coming down my face and I'm listening. Jesus loves you. Jesus not only died for your forgiveness, but he took these stripes for you. He took this sickness for you. He took this. He died your death so you can live. And I was like, and he said, do this prayer with me at the end. And I did this prayer and boom, I had this encounter with the Holy Spirit and I was set on fire for the Lord with this passionate love and faith. And suddenly I want a Bible and suddenly I can't talk about Jesus. And suddenly I want to praise and worship. I'm throwing away my secular music. I'm throwing away all this nonsense. That you should have heard the stuff I listened to. I throw it away. I'm, I'm getting rid of my new age stuff in my room. I have Baptist people who've been more, born again for 20 20 something years and within gosh hours I'm getting rid of stuff no I'm getting rid of this well you can keep that if you just like the pretty crystal no I didn't use them for pretty I'm getting rid get the garbage bag I got rid that that's not me that's the Holy Ghost I didn't even know the Bible hallelujah so when people say I'm born again and there's no change and they have no idea and they all that I kind of go hmm because there should be a change you don't need to know the bible come on somebody out there you don't need to know the bible if you have not had an encounter with the lord you know about jesus you want to have an encounter with the lord there should be a transformation happening all right let me go into just some examples here okay for again this desire so when I learned this, when I had this encounter with the Lord, I was housebound and bedridden because I was so sick. Not months, not a year, years, okay? I lost everything, had no friends, my family couldn't handle it. I was down there sometimes, I couldn't eat, I couldn't feed myself. Um, I had one person in my life, he was my, my boyfriend at the time, and, and the Lord used his mom to bring me the Lord like this. All right, it was a dire situation without going into a whole lot of the detail. The point is, is that when this happened, this desire this desire was placed in me. This desire, Lord, you say that you took the sickness on the cross. You say by your stripes I am healed. I don't care what these doctors are saying. I don't care then. I take you at your word. And I remember laying in bed and I could barely do anything. I could barely speak for hours. It was like I had a stroke. I couldn't control anything. I'd be laying here so sick and I would just be talking to the Lord. Wow, Lord. You're real, and you're good. Good wins over evil. Wow, wow, thank you, you love me. Thank you, you took the sickness for me. I don't know how you're gonna do it, Lord. I don't know how you're gonna do it. And I would begin to pray these prayers, Holy Spirit prayers. I didn't know what I was doing. It was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Everything around me, everyone around me was telling me there was no hope for me to even live. There was no hope. Never mind to get out of the bed and preach. There was no hope but God. The word of God said otherwise. And so I said, Lord, I take you at your word. He put this desire in me and I said, and I came into agreement with it. And this is what it is, okay? Passionately and relentlessly in pursuit of God and his word and his will for your life. You will stop at nothing to attain it. It is all consuming. That is what he put in me. That is what we need. That is what got me through when I was being tormented by devils. I was being attacked in ways that most people can't even handle hearing about. Torture, awful things. I touch on it in our Pastor Tom and I's interview. I touch on it. I didn't share a whole lot, really. All right? This desire, Lord, 
I don't, I don't care. Now I know it's the devil that has been doing this to me. God is not the one putting sickness on your body. God is not the one trying to take you out. God is not the one punishing you. When you were born again, Jesus took that for you. It is not God that is doing that to you. When I learned that, I had my CD player, my cheap CD Walmart player. You know, I had it there. It barely worked. It had this like weird, you know, kind of moved in this weird way, the CD I didn't care. I put my CD things in there and I listened to the word of God and I'd be half out half the time, but I would wake up to the word of God praying, come on somebody, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and you keep hearing it and you keep hearing it and then you begin to declare it and then it begins to get in you and then it begins to manifest in you and you say, Lord, I am healed by your stripes. I don't care, devil, shut up. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. No, you can't even get out of bed. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. No, you can't even feed yourself. I don't care. The word of God says that I am healed. Lord, I thank you. When you get me up out of this bed, use me to save and heal and deliver people, Father. And he would show me visions. And I didn't tell anyone. I didn't know what the heck. Okay, Lord, whatever. I'm a baby Christian. And then over the years, people would come up and prophesy. Do you know your call to blah, blah, blah? You know your call to the ministry? What's that, you know? And I, I just treasured that in my heart, like Mary, over the years. And boy, I tell you, look at, look at right now. Look at where I am. To the glory of God. To the glory of God. Come on, somebody. Anybody here? Come to the glory of God. I was told that I would be lucky if I could ever get out of bed. I would be told I, I, I was lucky if I could have any life at all. I couldn't drive. I, think about this. I could barely feed myself. Now look. Amen. To the glory of God. This desire, this desire that God can place in you, wants to place in you, or has placed in you, that's what's going to help get you through it, okay? In cooperation, in cooperation with the Holy Spirit. All right, so let me give you, let me give you uh, some other testimonies to encourage you and for people to maybe relate to. So one of the issues that I dealt with, I was attacked, um, like a lot of people, from a very young age with fear, tormented with fear. I got made fun of in school, um, uh, my face would turn red, as Pastor Stella kindly pointed out a few weeks ago. And I, and I would get tormented. And, pe and pe that's what kids would do. Oh, your face is turning red. Look at you. Look at you. And would shame me. And what began to happen over time, like with a lot of kids, unfortunately, is I began to come into agreement that I, okay, I guess um, what I have to say uh, doesn't matter. You know, no one likes it. And all that blah, blah, you know, all the stuff. The devil takes advantage of that. And what, and what started as shame turned into fear, and it became a stronghold in my life. And I, I came into agreement with this anxiety and fear. And like, unfortunately, well, we can see this is the way the devil works. Do you know that one of the number one, it may be the number one, well, until this year, the number one fear, <sighs> was speaking publicly, getting up in front of people. That's extremely common for people. They have a fear of that. Why? Because the devil is doing the same old thing, trying to shut the mouth, trying to tell you that you're not worth, that you can't say anything, you have no value, you know, all blah, blah, blah. He has nothing new. So isn't this ironic that God knows he's predestined me to be a mouthpiece for the Lord? And what's the first thing that starts to get attacked is my mouth. Oh, don't speak. You can't speak. Look at you. You're a fool. Look at you. You're turning red. Look at you. Look at you. Shame, 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 shame. Just, just, you know what? Just go. Just don't even get up. The devil will attack, okay, your calling, often as early as possible. It's often a sign of what the Lord has actually called you to. So I came into agreement with this. I struggled with this through my life. I had kind of some ups and downs. I had breakthroughs at different times, but then it would come back. So by the time I fast forward into after I have this encounter with God, 
and I'm slowly, this was a long process, I'm still walking out the last part of the full manifestation of my health. This has been a long haul, you guys. Some things, is, some things are gonna be quick, God's gonna do miracles, okay, because I'm a walking miracle, hallelujah, to the glory of God. Some, but some of it's gonna be a process. So to encourage you guys out there, to encourage you in here, if you're going through a process of something, don't give up, again, this desire, say, Lord, fan this desire in me, no matter what, what, no matter what it takes not to give up, no matter what. Okay, so I am sitting here. Oh, shoot, I just lost my train of thought. Holy Spirit, where was I? Who's really listening? Who's really listening? Holy Spirit, what was I going to share? Oh, yeah, thank you, Lord. Good thing it wasn't you guys helping me. <laughs> so I have this fear of getting up. So one of the first things that the Lord began to deal with me in when I began to get stronger was this fear. <laughs> and I don't know if anyone in here <laughs> has ever had a fear of getting up and speaking in front of people. This is a real fear. Like, it's like panic attack. Like, it's a real fear or spirit of fear, okay? So, you know, when you don't have revelation, I mean, you really feel that. It's like a huge deal. Sounds silly to some people, but it, it, it's real to you. So I'm in this church, and in the bulletin, you know, the bulletin. In the bulletin. Where's our bulletin, Pastor Tom? In, in the bulletin, it's talking about uh, they're doing some sort of play outreach. Well, the moment I saw play, I ignored it. Because I'm like, you couldn't pay me enough to get in front of people like, play like, well, why would you want to get up in front of people? Like, what's your, you know, that was my attitude, seriously. Like, I, I was in such bondage to fear um, that it just, it was like I didn't even see it. So one day, <laughs> one day, uh, the leader, one of the leaders of this play, comes up to me and says, you know, um, the leading role, the lady that was going to play that can't play it anymore. And we were all praying, and God told us, you're supposed to do it. God, God said, do you know what I did? I laughed. I literally laughed in her face. Like, I laughed. Like, it wasn't good, guys. I laughed, and you know what I began to do? Out of my mouth began, because the Lord corrected me, out of my mouth I began to disqualify my, oh, no, 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 no. God would never choose me. Oh, no, no, no. I can't get up in, in front of people. There, You couldn't pay me enough. And I went on and on, probably three whole minutes. And the Lord stopped me, and he said, stop it. I have not given you a spirit of fear and timidity. And by the way, come out of agreement with this whole introvert thing, that you're timid, that you're shy. Because I haven't given you that spirit. I am asking you to do this. It was a real, like, possible rebuke correction. Okay, loud in here. Well, I wish I could tell you that I immediately obeyed. I didn't. I said to this woman, well, I'll pray with you. And if the Lord, thank God for God's grace, if the Lord confirms it, then I'll think about it. Okay, he had literally, the God, God had just corrected me. Okay? So I don't even think I got five words out. We, we, we get hands and I went, Lord, so, and then I have the nerve to pray after God just told me. To, I mean, come on, am I the only one? So I said, Lord, if this is you, and when the moment we said that, I am not kidding you, no exaggeration. I don't know if it was an angel, I don't know what, but the Lord literally like lifted us, my head went up like an exaggerated yes, came down, and, and we fell back like this. I mean, tell me that God doesn't have a sense of humor, because he had just corrected me, and I'm like, if this is you, Lord, Yeah. So we started laughing. I went, oh, yes, sir. Okay, I'm sorry, Lord. I repented. <laughs> and I said, only because it's you. Only because it's you will I do this play thing. Leading role. What? And this was the beginning process of God beginning to break off this fear of getting up in front of people. 
And I want to encourage you today because it was my obedience. Why? Desire. Desire to obey the Lord. This desire that Apostle Paul is talking about, it needs to be so strong that it overtakes no matter what comes against you. It has to be stronger, okay? Because you have to just agree that you're going to obey God no matter what. The desire to obey the Lord has got to be stronger because fear will come. Stuff will come. All this yap, yap, yap and stuff from your childhood, all this stuff that God wants to heal in us, it will come. But when you have this desire, that's what you'll do. I, oh, if Because you said it, Lord, I will do it. I'll be a fool because in my mind, I'm going to be this. I, I'm like, I don't know how this is good. I can't act like what? Seriously, Lord, <laughs> I'm being a little brat. And the moment we go to start the play rehearsal, <laughs> the second page, I have a hysterical crying scene. <laughs> and I'm like, seriously, Lord, like it's not enough. God does have a sense of humor, and he will humble us. But I obeyed it. And God is so good and so gracious. Do you know the moment that I began to practice with them? He dropped a love in my heart for the, the ministry because it was an outreach. It was a modern day play that, was, that we would practice through and then would open to the public and it had the gospel in it. And it was very powerful, it reached many people and it was really an honor to be a part of that but I was so stuck in my own self and my own fear and my own stuff that at the beginning I didn't realize that. But that was the beginning process. Then God got me over, and again, I don't know, I know this is the Lord. I didn't want to be a part of, I definitely didn't want to be a part of this. We had a uh, Easter special. We had a dance team. I know Pastor Tom's going to love that. We had a dance team. We weren't tippy toe dancers, I promise, Pastor Tom. So we had a, a, a dance ministry, and we did something with the play and the dance together for Easter. So, you know, several people volunteered. It was about a 200-person church. So, you know, we were able to do bigger, these bigger productions. And, uh, you know, we end up in this dance thing. I can't dance. You know, I'm just like, I somehow end up in this position. And I'm like, okay. But the anointing was there. Again, in front of people. I'm like, seriously, Lord? Okay, you, you already got me in the play thing. Now you want me to dance in front of people? Like, seriously? <laughs> So for a season, I was on this, this dance team, having to go out and do these things that, you know, not all the time, but to special occasions and stuff. Now, again, this was hard, you guys. I didn't want to do this, but th this was the process that God took me through. Then, okay, this gives you an idea of how, how in, I was bound up by fear so much. Um, so then, not just those, and then he starts to take me into... Um, moving in the gifts of the Spirit in our church congregation. Very different in a 200-person church than a small little group or a nice little safe prayer group when you're, where you get trained, which is important. But when you start stepping out in a big way, again, for someone like me, I was terrified. The way that my pastor, previous pastor, had it set up, we didn't have all the mics. It wasn't organized. He was training us. He was saying, okay, he was trying to get the church. Pastor Tom can relate to this even sometimes. Come on, you guys. <laughs> Don't make me call on you. So this was a bigger church, and he was trying to get people to come up and to share prophetic things. He was teaching on this and for years, and people were, you know, oh, I don't want to get up, and, you know, everyone's scared. So I wasn't the only one <laughs> dealing with this. Well, there was a, a senior lady there who did tongues and interpretation, or she would do the tongue. You know, ah, la, ba, 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 real loud, go off in a tongue. And someone else always interpreted it. So, you know, it was just great. I thought, oh, okay, cool, right? The Lord's, well, one day, my heart starts, and I'm like, what the heck? And the Lord goes, daughter, and I'm like, 
I'm going to give you the interpretation. And I'm like, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> My heart. Okay, so no one's saying anything. Suddenly, okay, so it seemed like forever. You know how when you're nervous and it seems like a really long time, it's pro pro maybe two minutes, which is pretty long in a service. It's total quiet, like a pin drop. My pastor suddenly picks up the mic. We're waiting. <laughs> One of you has the interpretation and God is trying to get you to do it. We're going to wait until you do it. <laughs> 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 I'm like, <gasps> now some people operate in this gift and this one, they say they see it, you know, and it's really, you know, oh yeah, I saw the interpretation, not me, I get like one partial word and the Lord's like, open your mouth and I'll fill it, and I'm like, okay, I know that's in the Bible, but seriously, God, so... <laughs> I begin, and by the way, we don't have a mic. You have to project your voice, okay? And this place is about five times the size of this, all right? And the worship team, you, you know, is, is, is still playing, but quiet. you got to project your voice <laughs> and start with the interpretation. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I start to project my voice, and I know one word, one. <laughs> And then out comes the interpretation. Thank God. And I'm waiting. <laughs> you know, am I going to get told that that was completely wacky? What, you know, whatever. I'm like prepared, like, oh, you're totally off. And like, um, you know. And the pastor kind of was like, okay. And I'm like, great. You know, that means that, you know. This is how you begin, by the way. This is how you begin. You begin by stepping out. Pastor Thomas talked about this. You're going to make mistakes. But for me in this case, and for many of you out here, this is where God needs to meet you where you're at, and he's gracious enough to do it. So when you have issues with coming up here, when you have issues with speaking out, when you have issues with, you know, flowing in the gifts, the Lord is going to give you opportunity, and you can say no. But this desire in you, again, what we're going to pray about today, needs to be strong enough in you so that you say, okay, Lord, you know what? I'm going to make a mistake, whatever. If I look like a fool, okay, but there's no other way that I'm going to learn, and you are worth it, okay? Passionately, relentlessly in pursuit will stop at nothing to attain it. All-consuming desire to obey God, to yield to him to the point where he can accomplish what he wants and willingness to go through whatever it is, whatever the process is. I'm going to end with this, and then I'm going to say, if any of you guys want to come up to, uh, for prayer today for this, I really believe the Lord is going to do a fresh impartation, a fresh prayer regarding this, this consuming fire, this consuming desire we're talking about today. When the Lord gave me the scripture, uh, I have to laugh, you guys, from Abraham, when I was praying about, I knew I was in transition. Many of you know this, coming up to Wisconsin. I had been in a, a previous church. I had been there almost a decade. I loved all the people. I was growing immensely. God was doing amazing things. I was doing almost into full-time ministry. Everything was going, you know, so-called on paper and then I went out to a conference, and a, a, a lady laid hands on me, and, and I, devils got transferred to me. Can that happen? Yes, it can. Unfriend. <laughs> Pastor Thomas talked about this. Happened to Pastor Stella. It can happen. Be very careful um, who you let lay hands on you when you don't know you, especially at conferences, even if they're a leader. This was a so-called leader. Okay, at any rate, it was not fun. I knew it was demonic because of all the history and stuff I had gone through, and I had been delivered after hell, years of hell. So I was not a happy camper. At any rate, in God's grace, he had already told me before this happened that he was going to move me to go get the next level of training for ministry. 
All right. Now, I didn't know everything about Pastor Tom. I didn't know he was a a, a leader of leaders that he trained ministry uh, or any of that. But God knew. And then as I began to look at his YouTube videos, I saw he knew deliverance. Well, now I'm in a pickle because I'm trying to do all the self deliverance, all the stuff that I know to do. And for whatever reason, it wasn't working. And I, and I got all sorts of hell breaking loose and I got witches, coming, all sorts of nonsense. Okay. Again, the devil has no new tricks. But how many of you know when you're going through a hard time, we like to be around our family and friends who know us, who love us, who will pray with us because it's hard enough going through hell. So when the Lord said, and leave everything and go to a place that I will show you, I thought, huh. is this you, Lord? And he said, you know my voice, daughter. Yes, Lord. Wisconsin, Lord? (laughs) In the winter, Lord? (laughs) Desire. 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 Not my will, but your will be done. And so I left everything everything delete your facebook account with all the minute what do you mean delete my facebook isn't this what you wanted lord yeah good job now delete it (laughs) can i tell anyone Eh, you could do a little post which you know maybe you know very few people see and then i deleted it all the ministers i was in contact all the people boom i was gone There's people probably to this day wondering what happened. The Lord told me, you can only tell these many people. And that's it. Desire. So I want to invite you guys to come up. If any of you, you can obviously come up for prayer for anything. But I really want to encourage people to come up for a fresh fire, a fresh anointing for this desire. And God to multiply it. Because he will use this to get you through. And I believe opportunities are going to come forth as God is exposing and cleaning up. Amen. Wasn't that fantastic? <laughs> Great job, Sabella. Thank you. That was one of the best uh, messages I've heard out of that. It's even as much as I've studied that, I think she even outdid me the first couple of verses there. But that's a good thing. Now, she's going to be here to pray for you for just a second. But the Lord wanted me to tell you this. You know, that desire thing is so important, especially in the gifts of the Spirit. Desire spiritual gifts. Have a white-hot desire for it. So the Lord said today, if you have a desire for whatever, and it's in your heart to do, then it's going to be an increase of that desire. Because we're entering into a time... And it is the time of times. I can't tell you, you will not even recognize a church in the next three years. Glory to God forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me give you a little testimony here. If it's all right, I won't take up your time, but we got plenty of time here. You know, I had a a friend that came to our church up north when we first established a church up north. And the family was, I was close to the family. We actually lived right across the street, rented his dad's house. And, but because of their business and so on and so forth, sometimes they'd have to be out in California and different things. They kind of, um, for whatever reason, didn't come to church, you know, very much or at all. We didn't see them for many long time. Well, I knew all his little daughters, you know, this, they were kids. I grew up with them. You know how I am with kids. I'm good with kids. And um, so, you know, I've always been on my heart. Well, lo and behold, they show up the last few weeks. The family's starting to come, which I'm ex- I was very happy to see them, you know. And Paul, the dad, the leader of the family, uh, has always been my friend. And Paul David uh, Jewelry, he's there in Fish Creek. And uh, he goes, 
I got a shirt. I said, we are having this testimony. So I gave, gave him the, the mic. And <clears throat> we had a pastor that I, I had a church in Elko, Nevada. The pastor's name was Franz and Karen. And they came up here. And Paul and Marcella kind of hit it off with them. And so they went to visit them in Nevada. This is a long ways around the bridge here. And the guest minister was Ed Dufresne, who was one of my mentors. So Ed Dufresne pulls this guy out, Paul, lays his hands on him and says, I'm going to put healing in your hands. You're going to have healing hands ministry. And Paul always remembered that. But for whatever reason, now listen, whatever reason, he kind of lost all of that. This is what's happened in the body of Christ. Many of you had words. You've had things happen to you. You've been had words spoken over you. Some people out there have, ha have had this. They're going to be coming in. This is why we're having this training. Because you see, God knows I I'm not perfect. But I know how to train in that area. I do. And <clears throat> I love it when I see people get involved. And Paul, Paul said, finally... He says, I went on this mission trip. You know how God deals with us. This is like 15 years almost later. He goes on this missionary trip, or 10 years anyway, and he goes on this thing, and he's drawn to this little boy that's deaf and dumb. And so the Lord kept laying on his heart, you go over there and pray for that boy. And he's going, oh, wow. give me a headache. I'll try to start with a headache. You know, I mean, deaf and dumb, that's pretty, pretty challenging, you'd think. How many know you're not doing it anyway? So he walks over there finally and does it, lays his hands on this little boy, and this little boy is instantly healed. Now, he said this to me, because this is true. When that happens to you, whoever you are, if it really happens, you have that happen to you, it changes you forever. It changes you. It's like... Woo! First time you cast out a devil, it changes you. First time you see somebody get delivered from something, it changes you. First time you see somebody healed that's miraculously healed, it changes you. Deaf ears, blind eyes, crippled people walking, it changes you. And, and, and I was telling Jay out there, I said, this, this, I, said I said, <clears throat> I still get blown away. Every time I see something like that. And it's, it, 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 it fans that desire. Man, I, I look at Ed Dufresne himself, laid hands on me one day in the middle of the church like that, and he says, let it be known from this day forward, you know, and he says, it says uh, Brother Tom will be known for, you know, deaf ears opening. And from that time on, almost everybody we prayed for it was deaf, was healed. I mean, but somehow we've kind of lost some of that desire up here in this cold atmosphere for so long. Well, we're getting it back. And so I think today what, what's going to happen, Sabella, is you're going to pray for desire for whatever, but I think we're going to have desire for these things, and these things are going to kick in. I don't know about you, but I want to go to another level. I want to go to another level today. I want to see something happen today. And what a great message. Awesome message. Hallelujah. Yeah, of course. She, she, she's, uh, she's open to whatever. Come on. Okay. Well, this is, this is, um, remind me of, um, when I was in Panama. Okay. And I went to Panama and then I always go to Pastor Albert's church. And, um, Sister Sabella was talking about fear and talking about, you know, when you're going to get up and do these things. And somehow, you know, I, I like to go. I used to go, having been in Panama for five years. But I, I like it just to go, the desire, right? The things of God, I wanted to go and all that stuff. So... They have services, let me back up. They have services like 7, 10, 11, 11.30, I don't know. The last one is at 3 o'clock. 
So, yes. And then you got to come back at six. There was too many people in there. Yes. Like 5,000, 3,000, something like that, you know. So I, 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 I tell Mama Zita, my mother, and I said, um, Mom, I know that you're going to go next door to the, you know, to the Catholic Church. It's okay. That's fine, you know. But I'm going to go early. So I go over there for, you know, the service at 8 o'clock, and the other one is at 10. So I stay over there because it was something that I wanted to go there. But I tell you what, I take my Bible the English first, because most of the time I didn't understand what he was talking about. <laughs> the words, I, didn't, I, I got saved here in the United States. So I'm used to the English. And I go, what is he saying? <laughs> that, that, that. Look at the, the verse, oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, I, I, I know, okay. No, <laughs> so I had to do it my own self. But, the reason that I'm saying this, because one time Pastor Alvarez asked me to speak in 5,000 people church, in a big old church. And I go, Tom, you don't believe what happening now. I go, I'm shy. I don't speak that much. And you know that when you ask me, it's like, oh, God, you got to. And then. You know, you're thinking about it, and it's still my heart going. It's always my heart is going, do, 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 well, whatever it is. So I call him. I remember. And he goes, guess what happened? Pastor Alvarez asked me to speak in the morning at 11 o'clock when everybody's coming. Oh, Lord, it's not a 7 there's hardly anybody there <laughs> at 11 o'clock. <laughs> the big service with all this is jam. You know, I see these people. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. Oh, so anyhow, I call him and he goes, are you going to do it? I said, I'm going to do it. Oh, and I remember over here in a little church, there's time praying for me. I'm going, I don't even know. And I told Pastor Alvarez, Pastor Alvarez, you know English. If I am got stuck, I'm going to go over there, and you're not going anywhere. He goes, I'm going to help you, I'm going to help you, I'm going to help you. Really, I'm going to help you, I'm going to help you. But when I got, and then Mama Zita and my brother came, right? And they were sitting right there in the front. Oh, Lord. I said, help me, Jesus. I really need help. <laughs> I say, I really need me. But I tell you one thing. When you obey, and we had that desire, and you know that you know that you know when you're stepping out is when the anointing is going to come. Right then. So what I did is I went in there, right? And I go, hallelujah to Jesus. And I say, Thank you, Lord. And I said, you know, so I, I, I was telling them about my background from Panama, and I'm here, and that, 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 that I say, I've said. So all of a sudden, I talk about the issue, the, the, the woman with the issue of blood. So I'm going, sisters and brothers, I'm not going for half an hour. I'm going for two hours. And I don't even know where they're coming from. I'm going, oh, my God. <laughs> Two hours. And, and my mama sits is going like, Lord, let her just stop it, stop it, stop it. Let her just like, oh, until what time? But and then I pray for people. And it, I had so much, t I mean, a, a, a beautiful time. But I stepped out. I mean, you know, for 5,000 people, for me to speak, oh, my gosh, they were having like, a great time and all that. And Pastor Alvarez had a great time and all that. But uh, I, it, it was not an hour. It was two hours and something. And they go for that. They go for that. They don't go anywhere, you know. They won't let me do it. They let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> and they let me do it. And I go, Tom. And he, all this time that he has preached, and I go in like 5,000 people and going like, wow. Well, I just wanted to let you know that that feared 
it just did something to me. To me, excuse me, that did something that it left and all that, you know. So it's just going and having a great time and be yourself. Don't be somebody else. That's right. Be your own self. I cannot be him or Sabella or somebody else. I'm here. And like, like Tom says, you, hit, you have to really, really hear her, what she said, because of the words like... What do you call that? The huh? The accent. The accent, but I said something one time in a big church, and they start laughing at me. Did you remember what it was he's talking about? Oh, utterance, and I said u uterans, utered, that it has power. And they said, yes, and it was utterance, and everybody would start laughing like, oh my gosh. And I said, Tom, why are they laughing at me? What did I do? I said, nothing, honey. You just said something. <laughs> so anyhow, I just wanted to say this. <laughs> Amen. There is power in the uterus. A lot of power in the uterus. Um, uh, but, you know, when she did that, uh, for whatever reason, you know, you have to understand, this church is heavy duty. They've got more Cirillo. They've got Benny Hinn who goes there. They've got all these guys. And he just loves Stella. And whatever, and says, you know, whenever you guys come, 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 come speak. And open the door. And we became one of their favorite. I was like their prophet, which is interesting, because he's more of an apostolic than I am. But I operated as a prophet. And tongues and interpretation over them. And did, we broke that whole ch church loose in that way. God, God enabled us to do it. It was all by the grace of God. But the Lord, you know, he's going to do something. You know, Sabella has a desire to see people get set free and delivered. And some of the things that she's been through where she went through those rough things where it took a long time and she fought and fought and fought, God is going to grace you, Sabella, to where you have a word and what took you 10, time, 10 maybe 10 sessions to get set free will happen immediately because of the gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah. That's what the Lord says about it. I mean, she's going to be a Tyrannosaurus when it comes to the devil. A Tyron, he's going to rue the day, mess with her, Tyrannosaurus. We're going to have accurate gifts. We're going to see things in the realm of the Spirit. Some of you guys are going to have experiences, you know. Hallelujah visions and dreams and these you know these prophetic visions and dreams are so prevalent nowadays it's like man i feel like you know i'm on the outside looking in sometimes but you know i have to be more sensitive to these things i had one last night very important i'm going to tell you what it was about one of our families but it's important for you guys to have a desire today to to go to another level okay so i'm going to let turn her loose here she comes we're going to let her pray come on and you can do the offering uh, whenever you want to now, okay? Do you want me to do the offering now? Probably good idea. Yeah, let's just do it. Let's just do it now. <laughs> oh, you got wise guys. Peanut gallery. That's what I know I asked. And also remember, you know, um, uh, Faith Alive Fellowship on the camera. Yes. On the camera, if you're at the internet, it uh, there's a... There's a link down below if you want to give on PayPal or you want to send offerings to Faith of Life Fellowship Post Office Box 605, Sturgeon Like the Fish, Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, 54235. And so you can do that. And if you need an envelope for and Stella's going to give me, Stella's doing the deaconing, the ushering today. Yes. Stepping out. I'm telling you, stepping, stepping out. out. Stepping out. <laughs> <laughs> Power gone. Just, 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 just sit, pass it around. Make, make sure. Make, make sure you hit everybody. Like Lori, she might have a million dollar check. You don't know. Who knows? Someday, somebody's going to have a million dollar check. All right, praise God. All right, I'm going to go sit down.
<laughs> okay. <laughs> this is stepping out, see? Thank you, Jesus. All right, stretch forth your hands here. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you so much, Lord, because we do desire. We desire you. We desire your ways. We desire you to have your way in us. And your, we desire that you would have your way with these offerings and these gifts, Father God. So we lift them up to you in love. We thank you for your faithfulness. We ask that you would multiply this exponentially to the glory of your kingdom, that people would be saved, healed, delivered, set free, and set on fire for you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, sister. All right, so if anyone wants to come up, like Pastor Tom was talking about, uh, to get prayed over for desire desire whether it be again for the 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 gifts of the spirit which um i meant to actually mention i totally yep or leadership or whatever god has called you to to have that fanned into flame hallelujah feel free to come up okay any catchers always a good prayer. Do you want me to do this on the mic or no? For prayer. You can do whatever you want to do. It doesn't, it doesn't matter you to don't me. Hit him with that. the mic. <laughs> <laughs> the the mic the mic anointing. I might do that. I could probably get away with it. You can. Right now, in the name of Jesus, and I thank you for lining her up, lining her up, and that her steps are ordered in the name of Jesus. Sister, as you step out, the Lord is going to give you even more clarity, and I just see the flames of fire coming upon you and upon your tongue, and to continue to pray. I don't know if you're going to get the um, interpretation of tongues, um, possibly, but that's what I'm seeing for you. So hallelujah. hallelujah. Just receive that by faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You're so welcome. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to double. We're going to double. Double. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Thank you, Lord. So if you give him a word, do it in the camera. Uh, oh, mic. I'm sorry. Okay. If you do, give him a word, do okay. it in the mic because that's okay. Comes out on the deal. Okay, sorry. I can I can I can say that again. That that's so what I was getting for uh, the dues is uh, deliverance ministry, and that they're going to be able to be praying even as they go through the villages and they're praying. They're going to be praying for someone even on the street, and they're going to be casting out devils, and that they're going to find out all the people that have been touched when they get to heaven. Yeah, you know. Hallelujah. We're going to have gifts on, uh, nowadays that are going to be spit, uh, like um, what I see w right now for them is like John Lake, he'd leave. 
he'd go to another country or something, pray for, you know, in the spirit. You can go in the spirit and do a lot of things. You know, the devil has what they call astral projection. That's a counterfeit of the real thing. I've been there, man. I've been to California. I wish I could get there and not have to drive a plane. <laughs> that was the quickest trip I've ever been on. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I didn't think specific. Yeah, I, just think I would say and I shall give you more songs, songs of deliverance. Safanya 317, for I am the Lord that sings songs of deliverance over you, daughter, and I shall use you in the same way. You shall sing songs. So when I give you those songs and those songs rise up by my Holy Spirit in you, open your mouth and sing, 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 sing over your family, sing over who I, who I show you, sing even just in the spirit and people will be set free. And I tell you, even on this day, atmospheres shall shift as you obey me in Jesus name. Amen. An atmosphere shifting, uh, yeah. when she sings in tongues yeah. for a, to a tongues and interpretation. Yeah. It's real unique. Yeah. Uh, not regular tongues. Yeah. It doesn't work when she does that. But when she sings it, which is, yeah. uh, we have an interpreter better than me for that. It was, it's, I can see it. It's powerful. Amen. Amen. Confirmation. Hallelujah, sister. Hallelujah. She's unusual, so praise God. <laughs> We're a pe peculiar people. For I am well pleased with you, daughter. You are like a beautiful flower, like a rose that is opening before me more and more every day. And I hear your cries and I know your heart. And I want you to know that your prayers avail much with me. And as you draw and as you get creative and as you do things and as you step out more and more, you shall see my anointing and you shall understand more and more even of my, of my word. And as you spend time with me, you shall grow in leaps and bounds. And I shall work through you and your mom, as you know, says the Lord. Thank you, Father, for fire upon my sister right now in the name of Jesus. And that desire being multiplied exponentially. And I thank you for the courage that is in her. And I thank you for the boldness that is in her that will rise up and shall come forth even more in the name of Jesus. Your precious. Ruby, I'm standing there looking at you, and I see you going out, and I see like a, a lot of you. It's like a mirror way out, and, and written on every one of those is restoration, 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 restoration. This next year. Whatever the devil tried to steal from you, claim it back. Claim it back. No matter what it looks like, you stand. God's got really good things for you. Hallelujah. 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 Amen, sister. <gasps> Hi, guy. It's Whoops. Chief. <laughs> Don't trip each other. <laughs> it's Chief and the wife. Oh, I can feel already. Fire, 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 Lord. I thank you for even more, even more of an increase of fire upon this couple.
Hora papa sito tora pa kora pa anuma ora papa and I am doing a new thing in you and you and it shall come forth and it is even being birthed even now it shall come forth and as you walk in my light which you have upon you and as you move in my spirit you shall say miracle signs and wonders operating by my spirit in you and you my sweet one the one my precious one that you have such a gentle and sweet spirit but you roar you roar in the spirit to the devil and I want you to know that that boldness shall increase and that fire is going to increase even more and more and more and even in your sweetness you shall slay devils in Jesus name amen you see me half the time I was going out and waking up I could hear you but I couldn't oh. Fire, 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 fire. Daughter, I have placed deep wells in you. Do not hold back when you're out in the stores, when you're out and about, for I shall give you words of knowledge, words of wisdom, and even prophecy, and you shall speak them, and you shall see people healed you shall see people cry and weep at the goodness of the Lord because you will begin to tell them about me more and more and even testify to what I have done in your life and the good things of the Lord in Jesus name amen thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord firecracker <laughs> In the name of Jesus, Korra Papa, for yes, I shall give you interpretation of tongues, daughter. <laughs> because I am stretching you. I am stretching you. Allow me to stretch you. You feel like a gummy doll, but allow it. Allow it. This is the day of transition for you because you have come up. You have come forward, and all of heaven backs you up. So recognize this boldness I have placed in you. Recognize you're a carrier of my joy and my love love and my power and go forth with confidence in me through you in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lori, the Lord says there's inflammation in your body. There's inflammation in your body that is causing a lot of issues. And that right now I see God's hand on that. I see it. I see the touch of God. Father, let that power go through her now in Jesus' name. Thank you. There, it's going to go down all the way down through your body. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. All right. Hallelujah. 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 Korrashandora Maharata. Hi, Pastor. Says another firecracker. <laughs> For the joy of the Lord is your strength, and I sit on the throne.